now. So the, the House is moving on now to a private uh, member's bill, uh, and uh, it's the Animal Protection uh, related to Hare's Bill 2015, uh, and I'd like to ask uh, Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan to move the bill. Um, and to uh, you have 15 minutes, Deputy. Yeah. Thank you. I, I move the bill, ask Ken Coyle. Okay. Uh, for second stage. To second, yeah. That's agreed. <laughs> Thank you. Um, once again, the Doyle has an opportunity to put an end to this cruel practice of live hair coursing. And there is no doubt about it, it is cruel and it is animal abuse. And I'm struck by the contradictions. First of all, we live in a country of great natural beauty, and yet we treat animals like hers appallingly. The contradiction and the irony, which I've mentioned already, that we have the Minister for Arts issuing licences to capture to net hers. And how is this part of the artistic and cultural agenda of this country to net hares, keep them in captivity for several weeks before releasing them into a field to be chased and to be hunted by the greyhound? There's also the contradiction in calling this a sport, because to me, sport is about fairness, it's about skill and talent, it's about matching people or teams of pretty similar ability or standard of play. And when I look at coursing, I look at a small, slight animal um, versus a much, much bigger and stronger animal. The average weight of the hare is about six pound, the average weight of a greyhound is 60 pound plus. And I've used the analogy that it's almost like asking Katie Taylor to get into the ring with a Mike Tyson figure or a sumo wrestler. And there's the contradiction that the hare is a protected species under the Wildlife Act, and yet we allow wanton cruelty to the hare. There's a contradiction that we have an animal and welfare bill, the ethos of which is one of preventing cruelty to animals and unnecessary suffering to animals, and yet this bill exempts hares. And then there's the other contradiction, and I'm putting it in the form of a question. There are owners of greyhounds who dislike coursing, but yet in order to register their greyhounds for racing, they have to do so with the Irish Coursing Club. And even though they object to their money being used for coursing, nevertheless, they have to support that organisation financially. And then there is the other contradiction that we pride ourselves on our uniqueness. And we are unique in many ways and we're special. And I do believe there's a special sense of Irishness. But there's another way in which we are unique now. And it most certainly is not special that we're one of only three countries in Europe that have live hair coursing. And we are the only country in these aisles with live hair coursing because it's banned in England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. So if we look at the facts documented year after year. And we get these facts from various sources. Rangers from the National Parks and Wildlife Services who don't have enough rangers to cover all the coursing meetings. And we also get the facts from vets and facts from coursers. And surprise, there are discrepancies in the reports from both rangers and coursers, even though they're describing the same meeting. These facts are sourced through freedom of information with great difficulty, and I have to ask why the difficulty in getting the facts. For example, at one meeting, the ranger reported 14 hares were hit, six badly, with one dying of injuries and three put down. At the same meeting, the courses reported 12 hares, quote, requiring assistance, which is a euphemism for hares being hit and mauled. At another coursing event, the rangers' report said there were five hares struck by dogs, but the coursers' report said there were two hares requiring assistance. So if the courser is prepared to minimise the number of incidents when they know the ranger is there, how can they be depended on to report accurately when the ranger is not there? December of last year, loads of meetings, and we have reports, and I'm just giving a sense of them, seven hares struck, three dying of injuries. Another one, three hares struck, two being put down. Another, six hares mauled, and another, three put down, five needing treatment by the vet. And so on and so on, similar figures every single year. And they are examples of wanton cruelty. People who have concerns about animal welfare, they try to enter the meetings and when they try to film it, they're subject to harassment and intimidation. But nevertheless, they persist. And there's very significant video footage of hers being mauled. We can hear the screeches of pain from the hers and that's available on social media to be seen or heard. 
Coursing clubs are known to make the work of the rangers difficult, the work of the rangers to ensure that rules and regulations as per the licence are applied. At a particular coursing meeting, ICABs, and I want to acknowledge the work that they have done, they managed to film the meeting, but ended up being assaulted by a courser. They had the camera taken from them. When the camera was returned by the Gardaí, the memory card was missing. At that meeting, the hares were having trouble accessing escape and were pursued by the greyhounds for considerable lengths of times. There were no dates for hair uh, captures at that particular meeting, which is required, so it's not known how long the courses had those hares in their possession. There's also an evidence of the inspectors being impeded in their work um, by the courses. The cruelty, though, doesn't just begin at the coursing meeting. It begins much sooner, when the licence to net hers is granted by the Minister for Arts. And in spite of those reports of the injuries and the deaths of hers at coursing meetings, in spite of the extensive opposition to live her coursing in this country and abroad, the licences continue to be issued and hers are snatched from their natural habitat. And even though there have been breaches of that Wildlife Act regarding the netting and the licences, which I have brought to the attention of the Minister, the Minister continues to issue licences. Now, if a nightclub or a pub breach terms of their licence, it will be very difficult, if not impossible, for them to have their licences renewed, but not when it comes to coursing. Our Minister doesn't appear to have any qualms, and it's carry on regardless. So why would anyone stick to the terms of the licence when they know that they can get away with doing what they like, when they like, which is exactly what they do? I'm also getting very disturbing information from concerned people in rural Ireland about the use of technology, of lasers and also of smoke bombs being used to capture hares. And I'm told there is an extremely lucrative hare trade. Now, while the greyhounds cannot bite the hares, greyhounds have very sharp, long nails. So imagine those nails eating into your skin, eating into your body. Serious injuries also occur through collision and through the tossing of the hares. And I am not making this up. I repeat, we have video and we have photographic evidence of all of this. Also, but less apparent, are the effects of stress myopathy, and it's the vets who give me the information on this. It's a life-threatening condition for the hare during captivity. After netting and during and after the chase, and for those fortunate enough to escape, the quote from the vet for the Irish Coursing Club was, it's impossible to completely avoid stress in hares once you manhandle them and take them out of their natural environment. The stress starts, he explains, from the minute you take the hare out of his form until it's landed in the net. That's followed by rough handling, boxing and transporting, all alien to a small creature used to the freedom of the fields. Another vet made the point, and I quote, that under the influence of stress, the hare's immune system is compromised. Hares are significantly stressed when corralled and coursed, and this combination of circumstances has resulted in the deaths of hares. Now, there are landowners and farmers who are against netting, who are against having their farms and their lands invaded by those out to net and trap the hares, but there is no protection from, for them as they object to the netting. We have confirmation, for example, in one year when two golf clubs, one semi-state body, a caravan park and a monastic centre had hares netted and trapped on their lands without their permission and nothing was done about that. There was no recourse for them. And I want to stress there is an alternative to live hair coursing and we see that in Australia and in the United States with very successful rag coursing. So in the context of all that suffering for the hares, also injuries to the greyhounds, opposition and criticism from landowners and farmers to the invasion of their lands, but still we persist in this extremely inhumane practice. And I read with incredulity at the statements from some political parties, but I do acknowledge I'd written to all the whips and two of them got back to me, or three actually. One party is opposed to the infliction of cruelty to animals, especially for purposes of entertainment. But yet, they're not going to support my bill to ban live hair coursing. They believe that Ireland have coursing practices that are regulated to minimise unnecessary suffering to the animal. And another political party told me that there are existing strict regulatory framework which ensures the highest animal welfare standards. Well, my answer is, tell that to 
the hare that the greyhound is muzzled and so the greyhound cannot kill it, it can only toss it in the air and break its bones. Now, I'm told that we have enforcement of existing regulations and hares can only be collected for coursing by ICC affiliated clubs in accordance with the terms of the licence. I've pointed out, we have evidence that that is not happening. So it's all the more reason to stop this cruel practice. Coursing is also allowed during adverse weather conditions and it was with great difficulty that we got a coursing meeting postponed, mind you, because of the adverse weather conditions. So I would like to see it in the licence, if we still have this, that there should be an automatic suspension, uh, that it is suspended during spells of freezing weather, hailstorms and heavy winds. And that's in the interest of both the welfare of the greyhound and the hare. Two years ago, there were six greyhounds in the National Hair Coursing Festival who tested positive for banned substances. There's a really sinister dimension to hair coursing when I read that. There's no testing for illegal substances at the smaller coursing events. So if there were, I wonder what would be found. So so much for our animal-loving greyhound owners when they're using performance-enhancing drugs for the greyhounds. The Department of Agriculture should demand more testing or demand um, more regulation on this. And I want to go back, there are injuries to the greyhounds as well. Um, we have a dreadful attitude towards greyhounds in this country also, and I will mention that here. We've had the recent debacle of greyhounds being shipped off to Macau, where there are no animal welfare uh, considerations whatsoever. Now, I've met loads of greyhounds on these protests, and they also are the most gentle of creature. And they, too, I think, are putting in, being put into an environment where they are expected to hunt. And again, I, this is just something that does not sit easy. Now, I want to ask those who go coursing. I mean, what do you do at the coursing meeting when the greyhound has raced and chased around the field after the hare and then finally catches it, tosses it in the air and then the hare falls? Is that when the cheering and the clapping starts and is that when you collect your money um, from the betting that goes on, goes on? One other question and is this, who is responsible for the injury and the death of a protected species? Because the hare is protected under the Wildlife Act. So who's responsible when the hare is injured or when the hare dies from a greyhound? Is it the greyhound's owner? Is it the licensee of the event? Is it the landowner where the event is taking place? Is it the local authority? Is it the department? Is it the minister who signed the licence? And I think we're coming to the case now where somebody will take a case when hares are injured and they are killed, which is totally against the National Wildlife Act. Is clockta cruolake cursoil gira? Agus tashe do creta gwil an clockta shu e glanum interaig in you. Nach will mass again er dula agus er ar nairacht. Now, we were told coming into this trial that we were going to have a new politics and we were going to see an awful lot more free votes. This is an ideal opportunity to give free votes because there are people in this house who are against live hair coursing. Now, I know there are people who are for it, but I believe in democracy and I do believe if we had a free vote that it would be much fairer to this bill that I am proposing here tonight. So I don't know what we're afraid of by giving a free vote on this issue. The sky is not going to fall if there is a ban on live hair coursing. Life will go on, but it will be a much, much better life for both the hares and the greyhounds. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy O'Sullivan. We move now to uh, the Minister. Minister Heather Humphreys, you have 15 minutes. I got, um, um, first of all, I'm pleased to respond to the Deputy's Bill. And just for the record, um, I am the Minister for Arts, Heritage uh, and the Gaeltacht until an order is made to change the name. And uh, Heritage has been part of my, of, of my department's remit uh, for the last five years. So just to say that the Minister for Arts has responsibility for hair coursing, there are other responsibilities within that department and they have been there for some time now. Firstly, I'd like to uh, set out uh, to, to, for the House the legislative framework under which hair coursing operates. 
The control of live hair coursing, including the operation of individual coursing meetings and managing the use of hairs for that activity, is carried out under the Greyhound Industry Act 1958, which is the responsibility of my colleague, uh, the Minister for Agriculture, Food and Marine. Hair coursing is administered by the Irish Coursing Club, which is a body set up under the Greyhound Industry Act of 1958. Hares are protected species under the Wildlife Acts and may only be hunted by certain methods and during certain time periods as regulated under the Open Seasons Order. The hunting methods allowed are shooting with firearms, coursing at regulated coursing matches and hunting with packs of beagles and harriers. Under this legislation, hare coursing meetings are allowed between the 26th of September and the end of February uh, of the following year. Licences are issued by my department on an annual basis under the Wildlife, Wildlife Acts to the Irish Coursing Club on behalf of their affiliated clubs to facilitate the tagging and capturing of hares for the purpose of hare coursing during a given coursing season. The licences granted to the Irish Coursing Club include strict conditions which have been developed and refined over the years. My primary responsibility under the Wildlife Acts relate to the conservation of hares and that is why it falls under the heritage uh, section of my department. Um, in regard to conservation, there is no current evidence that coursing has a significant effect on hair populations and the decision to issue licences has taken into consideration the final report of the status of hairs in Ireland, Hair Survey of Ireland 2006-2007, uh, which estimated that the population of hares in Ireland was in the region of 535,000 in 2007. In recent years, in considering licence applications from the Irish Coursing Club, my department has taken account of the most recent conservation assessment in 2013, which was submitted to the European Commission on Habitats and Species. This report indicated that the Irish hare was considered widespread and common in Ireland and also stated that none of the threats, such as changing agricultural practices, are considered likely to impact on its conservation status in the foreseeable future. Officials of the National Parks and Wildlife Service of my department monitor coursing meetings as resources allow to ensure that the various conditions of the licences are adhered to. Veterinary officials from the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine also attend some coursing meetings. In addition, the Irish Coursing Club ensure there is a vet and control steward present at all coursing meetings. I should also point out that since I took over responsibility for this area, I have been active in ensuring that the conditions of the licences are enforced. Uh, for example, following the 2013-2014 season, I threatened sanctions against two uh, coursing clubs, Mallow and Niscanor, relating to non-cooperation with officials of my department. Since then, there have been improvements in both clubs and this reflects the success in the monitoring regime in operation by my department. In addition, I took further sanctions against two further clubs, Thurlis and Doon, on foot of lack of cooperation with my department officials during the 2014-2015 season. Subsequently, following a court conviction involving some Doon members, I was considering further sanctions against Doon when the Irish Coursing Club cancelled the Doon meeting scheduled for last November. And I welcome this decision by the ICC as it's an indication of the seriousness with which they view the issue. And what those sanctions also highlight is just how tightly controlled and regulated hair coursing is in Ireland. And I would remind the deputies who are calling for an outright ban on the potential dangers of such action, it could drive coursing underground. And the very real danger is that would result in unregulated coursing meetings which would represent far greater dangers for the safety of hares. And I know concerns have been raised that this has been the consequence of the ban in Northern Ireland. The Irish Coursing Club have applied for licences to capture and tag hares for the forthcoming 2016-2017 coursing season and these are under consideration. I am aware that officials of my department have raised a number of issues with the Irish Coursing Club following monitoring reports on meetings held during the 2015-2016 season. These matters will be further discussed at a meeting between officials of my department and the Irish Coursing Club in the next few weeks. And I do not rule out further sanctions against individual coursing clubs if it is warranted. 
The Deputy's Bill is primarily aimed at the welfare of the hair, and I want to assure the House that while my department's primar primary responsibility relates to the conservation status of the Irish hair, many of the conditions which are attached to the licences issued by my department to the ICC relate to the welfare of the hair. These strict conditions cover a range of areas covering hair welfare and include providing data on hair captures and releases, having a veterinary surgeon in attendance at a coursing meeting, not coursing hairs more than once per day, not coursing sick or injured hairs, and having adequate escapes for hairs during coursing, and releasing hairs in daylight the day after the coursing meeting with the agreement of my officials. The Irish Coursing Club also has extensive systems and practices in place to underpin the welfare of hairs and greyhounds involved in coursing and goes to great lengths to ensure the highest standards of welfare are adhered to. A monitoring committee on coursing is in place, comprised of officials from my department, the ICC and the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine, to monitor developments in coursing. And in that regard, the situation is kept under constant review to ensure that coursing is run in a well-controlled and responsible manner in the interests of both hares and greyhounds. In relation to the muzzling of greyhounds, while this is a matter for my colleague, the Minister for Agriculture, Food and the Marine, it is my understanding that the Irish Coursing Club has had mandatory muzzling of greyhounds at regulated coursing meetings since the early 1990s. And the muzzling of greyhounds obviously assists in reducing the number of hair injuries. Since my reappointment to Cabinet, the remit of my department has been expanded to include both rural affairs and regional development. Members of the House will be aware that hair coursing is mainly a rural activity. There are between 70 and 80 meetings held around the country and in some cases they attract thousands of people to rural towns. In many parts of the country, especially in Munster, it is an integral part of the sporting year. For example, the National Hair Coursing Meeting in Clonmel attracts approximately 10,000 visitors and it is estimated to be worth about 6 million euros to the local economy. Any proposal to ban live coursing would have a serious economic impact on these towns. While our discussion is largely based around regulated coursing in terms of conservation of the hair, there is a much greater issue to be considered, and that is the practice of hair lurching, which appears to be on the increase in certain parts of the country. This illegal practice of hunting hares usually involves people entering farmland and bogs without permission with one or more lurcher type dogs. The number of people involved in the group may vary but usually uh, groups of uh, two to eight individuals are involved. The dogs are kept on leads and only released when a hare is flushed, whereupon the dogs chase and catch the hare, generally resulting in the death of the hare. This activity mostly occurs during daylight hours but may also take place at night. In many cases, it appears there are organised gangs involved in this illegal activity. Many of them have no hesitation in using social media to, di to display pictures of dead hares. There have been a number of prosecutions in recent years taken by my department, and recently both my department and Angarda Siakana have engaged in joint operations to apprehend individuals engaged in hair lurching and bring them to court. I understand that in some instances it can be difficult to take prosecutions as some landowners may be reluctant to give evidence of illegal hunting on their lands due to intimidation or fear of reprisals. While I do not have figures on the numbers of hares killed by illegal hare lurching, indications are that it could run into hundreds. And again, I would reiterate that it is this type of illegal activity which is far more harmful to hares than regulated coursing meetings. And I do appreciate there are many individuals who are opposed to hare coursing, but equality for many rural communities, uh, uh, but equally for many rural communities, the activity is an integral part of their heritage. And it's my job to find a balance. I have mentioned the muzzling of greyhounds as well as the conditions which my department attaches to licences, all of which have shown very positive outcomes for hares. My department's responsibilities under the Wildlife Acts relate to the conservation of the Irish hare, and as I have already stated, this is not under threat. 
The fact remains that due to the strict regulations which are in place, over 99% of hares used in coursing are released back into the wild. And I want to assure the House that my department will continue to work with the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine and the ICC to ensure that the welfare of the hare is paramount during coursing meetings. I therefore recommend to the House that this bill be rejected. Uh, Minister, we move on now, and our next speaker is uh, Deputy Kevin O'Keefe. Deputy O'Keefe, you have ten minutes. Come on, uh, Count Caller, um, uh, thank you for affording me the opportunity to say a few words on tonight's private members' business. Um, I will, be, will not be supporting the bill that has been proposed, which will in effect ban hair crossing. My reason for this is a matter of conscience, but also after consultation with many of my constituents. This consultation is not something that has taken place over the last 48 or 72 hours, but in fact over a number of years, with the aim of promoting the safe practice of hair coursing. I also reject this bill, as there is already a strict regulatory framework in place, which ensures the highest animal welfare standards and protections are in place and carry out this sport. The rural activity of government regulated hair coursing has been persistently condemned in an attempt to ban regulated coursing. The groups who do this are small and are, are, and are in the minority, but are visible. They have relied on exaggeration, misinformation and fabrication in order to gain attention from the media and appeal to the politicians. I and my party take a very serious the issue of animal health and welfare. As someone who has dealt daily with animals, I strongly support any improvements in animal welfare. And I've always been proud with the fact that Fianna Fáil made significant improvements in animal welfare when last in government and continue to be at the forefront when it comes to improvements on issues regarding animal welfare. Regulated coursing is and has been managed under the Irish Coursing Club, which was established in 1916. It is the central authority for more than 80 coursing clubs. These clubs hold meetings once annually and typically over a two-day period. Coursing is supervised by the National Parks and Wildlife Services under the Department of Arts, Heritage and the Grailfoot. This is all strictly monitored by the Department of Agriculture. I am of the firm belief that many fail to differ differentiate between coursing and illegal hunting, as we've heard already uh, here on Lutchen. Both of these are worlds apart in practice. Although it is not uncommon for many to make the mistake one from the other, I believe it is important to clarify to the public the very real and important differences between regulated coursing and illegal hunting. As, I, as I've already stated, coursing is regulated fully by a number of bodies. Illegal hunting is completely unregulated and involves packs of unmuzzled dogs chasing any wildlife, sometimes livestock, for unlimited hours with aims of killing it. Normal Irish and EU wildlife laws are broken, including the killing of the protected when illegal hunting is carried out. Coursing is all about the hare, which is a remarkable work of nature, which has thrived for thousands of years on our island and will continue to flourish only with the assistance of coursing clubs and with the duty of care they provide for the hare. It is the concern that coursing clubs show for hair conservation that makes the sport so indispensable and unique. Without the efforts of coursing clubs and members, the hair population would be without the significant layer of protection it presently enjoys from husbandry initiatives afforded by coursing clubs on a yearly basis. Without regulated coursing, there would be an increase of unregulated illegal hunting taking place throughout the year, with no organisation taking responsibility or interest in the overall well-being of the hair. We have seen in the UK where coursing has been outlawed and published reports on wildlife crime in the UK point towards how the banning of regulated coursing in 2005 coincided with a dramatic increase in poaching by non-coursing people from criminal backgrounds. In 2013, the Animal Health and Welfare Bill, which was enacted by Minister Coveney, was instrumental in, in overhauling the archaic animal protection laws that previously existed. This ensures that the welfare of all animals, including non-farm animals, is properly protected and penalties for offenders are increased significantly. It also copper fastened advances in how we treat our animals and tackle the threat of epidemics devastating our livestock. I believe from this there is sufficiently robust regulatory framework in place currently to ensure that the highest animal welfare standards are maintained with respect to hair coursing. Clubs affiliated to the Irish Coursing Club catch approximately 5,500 hares each coursing season, which is roughly 1% of the national hare coursing population. More than 90% of the hares caught for hare coursing are returned to the wildlife each year also. Minister Humphreys has previously said that independent scientific studies have estimated that hare mortality 
Joint captivity and costs in Ireland is equivalent to less than 0.1% of the total adult hair population annually. I believe that the sponsors of the bill need to review the facts. I believe there is no hard data or scientific evidence to prove that the hair is an endangered species as a result of hair coarsing. From speaking to people who have devoted their lives to coarsing, they have all spoken about the resilience of the hair. It is equipped genetically to accommodate the chase. Regulated coarsing presents the hair with no situation with which it is unfamiliar or unequipped to deal with. Coarsing clubs have been and will continue to be deeply immersed in the conservation of the Irish hair population. I will be seeking new ways to improve conservation in the face of loss of habitat due to the advances of our modern world. This despite the uninformed and unproven efforts to try and ban it when no proven alternative conservation programs are in place for the hair. Excuse me. <clears throat> the purpose of this bill is to show Ireland's commitment to the rights of animals and that we are a country that follows the example of, of other civilised countries. We have always been world leaders when it comes to this issue. We have always worked in collaboration with the EU when it came to the conservation of natural habitats and continue to do so. We have always worked together with member states to form the same strong legislative framework in order to protect the most vulnerable species and habitat types across our continent. We continue to review the common animal welfare framework and we always seek ways as a parliament to improve it. This is something that I believe we have almost always had cross party consensus on in this house. Due to the Irish hair listing, the Department of Arts, Heritage and the Guildhook are obliged to take an assessment of animal conservation status every six years. Following the last assessment in 2013, the overall assessment with regard to the hair was, it, was widespread and common in Ireland with a broad habitat niche. There were no identified threats considered likely to impact on its conservation status. I am sure and am fully confident that the next review that is due to be carried out in 2019 will show that the population status of the Irish hair will be unchanged. This will be more in part down to the work of the Irish Coarsing Clubs and its member members in the work they carry out preserving the hair. I have the utmost respect for um, Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan, who has sponsored this bill, though I am dumbfounded by many of those who are in favour of this bill. They have made the thousands of people who are supporters and fanatics of hair coarsing out to be bloodthirsty people who get some sort of kick out of blood sports. I believe this is an unfair judgment on those who partake in hair coarsing. At each coarsing meeting, there is a vet present on the day to advise and administer care when required. Wildlife rangers are often in attendance to ensure that the 26 conditions of the licence are complied with. On conclusion of any given coarsing meeting, all hairs are released back into the wild under the supervision of the control steward. Each meeting is assessed by the general purpose meeting of the ICC and they determine if any improvement action is required and they also impose, impose sanctions if they feel they are necessary, as indicated by the Minister already. These are the actions of people who realise the duty of care and responsibility they have in preserving the hair. I do not believe that Deputy Sovereign has taken account the full facts before she rashly sponsored this bill. The history of this course in, in this country goes back many centuries. It is the bedrock of many small rural communities. I believe that Deputy O'Sullivan has not taken this into account before she sponsored this bill. I believe that she has listened to the views of one side, but has failed to listen to the views of the other. Those who partake in course respect nature and love nature. They would not do anything that would harm them in any way. In many ways, I believe they are more respectful of nature and endangered species than those who claim to be anti-blood sports, which Corsi is not. Those who love Corsi and love nature back up their words with actions. They go beyond the call of nature to ensure that no species is endangered. Coursing is so much to, to so many. It has been in families for generations. The traditions that coursing entails have been passed down from one generation to the next, and I hope they will continue to do so for many years to come. If you attend any coursing meeting in this country, like I do, it is a sport that incorporates all ages. It is a sport that brings communities, families, and friends together. It is an, 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 an organisation that has clear guidelines, ethics, and regulations. It takes any threat in these as an attack on coursing itself. Today is important to the economies of today is important to the economies of many small towns and villages when yearly meetings are held. It brings people from far and wide together and is an important source of income to local economies at a time this is hard to come by. I believe that the proposed amendments to the Welfare Act are short sighted and irresponsible and will have far reaching repercussions which have not yet been considered by those proposing the ban. Those who are in support of this bill are unable to provide an alternative and viable conservation strategy. These groups are, are also completely unconcerned with the is issues of illegal hunting of the Irish hair. We have debated this issue before the dial, before on the dial. Illegal hunting has never been brought up in this House by the sponsor of this bill. 
I have great concern over the extent in which anti-coursing groups and their selected TDs are, in, are sufficiently informed, and I believe there may be many role that, that there may be a role up and divide when it comes to this issue. I believe Deputy Sovereign has taken on us of the vast improvements made in regulated coursing and have no interest in the ICC goal of ensuring the overall longevity of the species through its own conservation contributions and by assisting the Gardaí and the NPWS in combating the practice of illegal hunting. If coursing is outlawed in this country, the hare will no longer be the protected species, but it will become a forgotten one. I believe that all proposals to ban hare coursing are poorly researched and are based on exaggerated facts and hysteria. I would like to remind deputies in this House that there is still a week to go before we vote on this Thank bill. You, Deputy O'Keefe. I would encourage all deputies to check the real facts to properly inform themselves of the issues and then make a judgment call, and not have one on the spot of the moment, decision based on emotion that is influenced by others and not by yourself. Good Thank moment. you very much, Deputy O'Keefe. Deputy Martin Kenny. Thank you. I see you have 10 minutes. I won't need the full 10 minutes, however. Um, while respecting the heartfelt views of the proposer, Sinn Féin does not support this bill, which sets out to amend the Wildlife Act by proposing to ban hair coursing completely. A ban on hair coursing is not compatible with Sinn Féin policy. Our policy on this and on all matters are based on motions decided at Ardèche. This issue was dealt with by a motion that was passed at our Sinn Féin Ardèche in 2010 after a passionate debate where strong opinions were expressed on both sides of the argument, both for and against hair coursing. Now, some rural practices may be distasteful to some people and are often presented as cruel and abusive, and that is the case here. We have two very opposing views on hair coursing. We believe that Irish hair coursing practices should be properly regulated to ensure sustainable wildlife management and to minimise unnecessary suffering to all animals involved. These regulated coursing meetings occur across the country in the winter months and are part of rural life for many who participate in these events. At a regulated hair coursing event, each chase is over a short distance where two muzzle greyhounds are released to chase a hare until the hare reaches a specially constructed escape hatch. In all, it lasts about 20 to 25 seconds. Killing or mauling the hare is not the purpose of regulated hair coursing. The banning of hair coursing would drive it underground, as has happened in many other countries, and would remove the current regulations and restrictions, which are essential to protect the animals involved. Therefore, we oppose such an outright ban. Hunting and fishing and hair coursing should continue to be regulated in the interests of sustainable wildlife management. This is not like blood sports, by which I mean things like dog fighting or badger baiting or cock fighting, which we all continue to absolutely oppose. While opposing this bill to ban hair coursing, we are committed to ensuring the proper regulation and management of the practice is maintained and believe that the banning of hair coursing would, as I have said, drive it underground, and that is the real issue here, and remove the current regulations which are essential to the protection of all the animals involved. Therefore, Sinn Féin will oppose such an outright ban. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy uh, Kenny. Deputy Claire Daly. You have uh, ten minutes, Deputy Daly. Thanks, Kian Corla. And I'd like to salute Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan. I'm sure it's quite poignant for her that she is following in the footsteps of Tony Gregory, who shockingly moved a similar bill 23 years ago now. And when we assembled at the press conference the other day, there were pictures of Mary Robinson and Michael D. Higgins and their contribution from the debate around the original bill that Deputy O'Sullivan is proposing to amend 40 years ago, calling for an urgency in dealing with this issue. And 40 years later, we're still hearing the same arguments. There is no difference of opinion. Hair coursing is a brutal, barbarous, wanton cruelty and has no part in a modern society. And I say it's a fact and can back it up because in the last stall we brought in legislation in relation to animal health and welfare. Guidelines which I didn't think went far enough, but in fairness to former Minister Coveney, they went dramatically further than anything we'd had before. But we specifically put in that an exclusion for hair coursing. So acknowledging the activity was cruel and then removing the hair from the protection of that act demonstrably showing that you accept its cruelty, but you're prepared to let it go on. And quite frankly, 
That is just not good enough. And to be honest, the contribution by the Fianna Fáil deputy I found absolutely astounding. Because apart from repeating generalities, in actual fact, the deputy was not dealing, there's no hysteria on this side. We are actually responding to facts and to information that's given, not from a third party, but from the people who attend coursing meetings, from the vets, from the National Parks and Wildlife Officers, and from some of the people who are in the gallery who regularly monitor the activities there. So what are we talking about and what goes on? A hair, a little hair, six to eight pounds. What's the first step on his journey? Well, he's netted uh, in a process where club members go out in the countryside, set up nets, scream and frighten the hares to strategically put them into nets. They're then put into a box, solitary, quiet, timid creatures kept in a box in captivity. They're not used to that, then they're released apart from the stress of that, which has been scientifically evaluated by the vets that attend. They're trained to run from dogs, released onto the course, yelled at by club members and so on. And I challenge anybody, look at the pictures of a greyhound with these muscles clenched back 10, 20 times the size of a hare going for that hare. When this was debated in this house 23 years ago, my former constituency colleague, Trevor Sargent, played a tape recording of a hare screaming and crying. And I was going to do it today, but to be honest, I, I just couldn't because it is absolutely horrendous. That's not ignorance, that's an absolute fact. And the idea that people could assemble in a field, and it's generally men, and it's men whose attendance are dwindling. Because you can cod yourselves all you like that this is a natural, rustic pursuit that Mammy, Daddy, Ben and Jane go out on a Sunday afternoon. I can tell you, they do not. It is generally a male support and people standing round and cheering uh, the massacre of another creature is abhorrent. Because they may not be able to be got with the teeth of a greyhound, but as Deputy O'Sullivan said, with claws, fear uh, and so on, it, it's just just horrendous. The points have been made. If it was a sport, a support is a, a, is a, a challenge of equals, willing participants. We can't call this a sport. It is ridiculous to say that this is in the Department of Arts. Do you think the gallery that was full of people yesterday fighting for the arts would think it's a good idea that hair coursing is covered by the same minister? It's absolutely ridiculous that that would be the case. Other deputies have said, oh, well, we need to do it. My God, those hairs, they'd be going around running riot all over the country if we didn't uh, control them. Absolute rubbish uh, as well. In fact, in, in the UK and Northern Ireland, when this was uh, barbarism was banned, it was made clear that there was no uh, need to control the numbers. In fact, hares are a, a biodiversity action plan species in Northern Ireland and in the UK, meaning that they are among the most threatened mammals requiring conservation action in Ireland, uh, habitat loss, human expansion, land man management changes and persecution actually have resulted in the Irish hare population being in serious decline across the country and in areas here on our doorstep there are actually no hares left on Dublin's North Bull Island, none whatsoever. So it's not true to say that the population is not, um, is, you know, mu multiplying. It's not a tradition, let's get that clear. At least, it's certainly not an Irish tradition. This barbaric pursuit was planted here by the English aristocracy, something I thought actually the Fianna Fáil, uh, as the great nationalist, might have had a problem with. But in any case, it's a cruel spectacle for lordships. The first rules being drawn up under the reign of Elizabeth I and the Duke of Norfolk. But even if it was an Irish tradition, it used to be an Italian tradition to go down to the Colosseum on a Friday night and watch people being eaten by lions. It used to be a tradition to display people in freak shows, but society moves on and civilization takes note of what needs to be done. And it's just not acceptable that we would cling to outdated ideology in order to support what is cruelty and what is recognised cruelty. Now, a report commissioned even by the British government shortly before it voted on the ban uh, of, to ban hunting said we're satisfied that being pursued, caught and killed by dogs in the courts seriously compromises the welfare of the hares. I don't have time, but your so-called regulation and the measures that you've put in place to 
protect the hair. I'm sorry, but it's just not good enough. We know from the statistics and in fact from pre freedom of, uh, of information documents reveal clinically the abuses that take place in our coursing season every year. In Clonmel, for example, over three days of coursing, where there were 188 uh, hares in captivity, there was a claim that not one hair was struck. Simply not the case. Uh, simply couldn't possibly be true. Over 7,000 hares were taken last year. Only 17 of the 75 official events were monitored. So when you say with great authority that everything is great and everything is fine, we can answer you and to say, you can't say that because your officers haven't been there to monitor what's gone on. And in actual fact, the testimony, which I don't have time to read, but from East Donegal, from my own constituency, where sadly the only part of Dublin is Balbriggan, where coursers stated in one instance two hares require assistance, one dying, uh, but veterinary reports saying something different. That experience is repeated all across the different counties, and the post-mortems carried out on those hares show the clear evidence of cruelty and trauma in them. And for what? Why do we have to do this? What's to be gained from it? Okay. There are humane alternatives to live coursing. Drag, drag coursing using a mechanical lure would eliminate once and for all this horrific cruelty. And also, Maureen, as Deputy O'Sullivan said, there'd be no longer need in that instance, for example, to muzzle the greyhounds, which is cruel in and of itself. There'd no longer be a need to take hares from their natural environment to be terrorised and baited. Wildlife rangers would no longer be obliged to attend meetings and keep an eye on the behaviour of coursing clubs. So then they might have time to actually deal with the activities that you were talking about, the hare lurching and so on. I mean, somebody made a comment going on, oh, you know, there was a, a spike in criminals bagging hares uh, in England when they did this. Do you think the hare cares whether he was taken up by a lord in a pair of jodhpurs or a young fella from a council estate somewhere? It doesn't make any difference. Cruelty is cruelty no matter what. And if you prohibited this, this activity, then your officers would have time to do the job they were designed to do. There would no longer be a conflict between the clubs and animal welfare activists. A switch to drag actually could give a dramatic boost to coursing clubs as people who consciously would stay away from the barbarism would actually decide to maybe uh, go along and have uh, a day out. It's a possible and very viable alternative. This is not a rural-urban divide. There are many people all over rural communities who find this utterly abhorrent. And the idea that dealing with this now is going to drive it underground is simply laughable. There are many activities that went on years ago uh, that are now banned that don't go on nowadays. You talk about, oh, well, there would be an impact on the local economy. All of the sponsors have withdrawn from these activities. If there was money to be made and this was popular, they wouldn't have done that. Numbers are dwindling, the crowds are down, this is a relic of a barbarous type of activity that most people in Ireland, no matter where they live, want no part of it. But yet again, Thank the political much, establishment Deputy lags Daly. behind the consciousness of people. We have a chance to deal with this next Thursday, Thank and I would urge people to break the whip and do so. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Deputy Michael Hartley. Thank you, Count Corla, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to uh, Maureen O'Sullivan's bill. Um, hair coursing is a huge part of the tradition and social fabric of rural Ireland. The breeding of greyhounds for greyhound racing and for coursing is a significant sporting interest and indeed a significant source of income for dog breeders and for small farmers in rural Ireland. It is particularly prevalent in Munster and particularly in my own county of County Clare. In West Clare, every second farmer uh, is involved in, in uh, greyhound breeding and in coursing. It's part of the fabric of rural society and many of my constituents are involved in this uh, sport. It has been a traditional pastime for decades and longer, but it was unregulated. In recent years, hair coursing has been modified substantially. Uh, with a view to protecting the hair, in, with a view to its protection in capture, its welfare before course, coursing meetings, the muzzling of dogs, the alteration to the course for the safety of the hair, and the release of the hair following the coursing meeting. The purpose of coursing is not to kill or harm the hair, the purpose of coursing is to turn the hair. 
If hair coursing was to be banned, it would go underground and would become unregulated, which would lead to the loss of the protection which these regulations now confer upon the hair. F finally, rural people are custodians of their environment. They know their environment and they see how nature works. Hares are natural prey for many wild animals, and this is part of nature. And indeed, substantial numbers of hares are killed on our roads every day, far outweighing any number which are inadvertently injured during a coursing meeting. I will be opposing the bill. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Harty. Uh, Deputy Catherine Martin. Gurv Magath Can Corla. Um, I commend Deputy O'Sullivan for bringing this bill to the House and look forward to a time when these barbaric practices are outlawed in Ireland. The Green Party has always been opposed to all blood sports and remain resolutely so. Needless to say, the Green Party will be supporting this bill. I would ask members tonight to consider the words of Abraham Lincoln, who said, I am in favour of animal rights as well as human rights. That is the way of a whole human being. A can corla laurame and ye fi hovoct cussinch agus kuhu bua an aliantora. Salaur dul la limo flarta, fector and boor shin in a curtius er intus on dulra agus riacht na nanvaha. Is tir midge la hoshna na dura den scot temple orin. Ak ni fader lesh na hanvaha sha maraktho le curs jock agus slad an dinadena. An will she cart, cur is jock, er an gurish at all and shot less na ke de blin. Is kuj dar nairacht e an crater sha. Neil go ega, ak ta go agam. Ta go agin, mar fullatory. Agus ta mej fragrak as thermi an fubbel a horch os cor an ti usul sha. Ni fager lin lanunch, less a nos barber has sha. She shin dull setor er anvi loa kailak gan kusnt. To be absolutely clear, hair coursing is a brutal ordeal. Before they experience this ordeal, they are trapped and trained, which is cruel enough. They are solitary creatures and keep to themselves in the wild. So keeping them in an enclosure causes significant stress and fear. Hair coursing involves the terrorising of one animal by another animal as a so-called sport, all the while being watched as entertainment. Not only are these timid and delicate creatures terrified and brutalised in this practice, but they often suffer severe injuries and death. The hare is a brittle-boned creature, and its internal injuries cannot heal. Injured hares have to be put down. The last private member's bill to ban coursing was taken over 20 years ago, and unfortunately was defeated. The solution on that occasion was to call on coursing clubs to muzzle the hounds. But Minister, Muzzling the dogs is not an answer, nor is it any less barbaric. Many die from stress and exhaustion, and hares continue to be mauled and struck by the greyhounds, resulting in their death. Since the introduction for muzzling for greyhounds in 1993, deaths to hares remain at around 200 per year. Hares are still dying either through contact injury, fear or capture myopathy. Up to 40 hares have died at any one event, with vets blaming the significant stress of captivity and coursing. The hare is a protected species under the Habitats Directive 2013, and this document notes the significant fluctuation in population numbers. We cannot be certain they are well preserved as a species. Many members of this House, past and present, from across the entire political spectrum, have over the last 20 years spoken out against this cruel, barbaric practice. But when it comes down to it, when it comes to the vote, they choose to toe the party line and rather than do the right thing. 
on May, Chakti Dalis of Farlaman Shah, son of Sauce to fill a while the Dergen Shah hugging, Agas a raw Lenaglan, Garau Agla or who? on Rud Kart a Yenev, Nock Roushid, Kroga Galore, on Fod a Yasev, August Takit a Horch, the Villa Maureen O'Sullivan, Ban Vishnu, Karpa Diem, Bigi Larger, Lergi Mishnok August Tishkent. Why, Minister, are we only one of three countries that are still allowing this practice? Why can we not reach a consensus in this house and get hair coursing banned once and for all? Let us take this opportunity presented by Deputy O'Sullivan to say that this practice clearly belongs in the past and is no longer acceptable to the vast majority of Irish people. In fact, independent surveys carried out over the years have shown that around 75% of more would like to see a ban in place, and this is not just urban dwellers. The majority of those in rural areas are also opposed to this so-called sport. Let us follow our nearest neighbours in England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland and let us ban this barbaric activity which sometimes trades under the name of being a sport. It is not a sport. And being described as a sport does a gross disservice to what true sport involves. We only have to think of last night in Lille as an example of one of so many true sports, full of honest and brave endeavour and unpredictability. 11 players against 11 players, a fair battle. Members, hair coursing is anything but fair. It is cruel and barbaric and I believe that if not next Thursday, our generation will, once and for all, end this cowardly cruelty. I hope that sooner rather than later. I conclude tonight, Akian Korla, in the words of a former member of this House, former Green Party leader Trevor Sargent, who said, I feel we have reached a point in our history where almost unanimous agreement has been reached in rejecting political violence. And to ensure that society develops respecting life in general, it is important, I believe, to reject violence in the name of sport also. I welcome this opportunity to speak in opposition uh, to this bill. Uh, the rural activity of government regulated hair coursing and the Irish Coursing Club have been persistently condemned by the proposer of this piece of legislation and by anti uh, coursing groups. The points made and remade over and over again by the anti coursing lobby are based on misinformation and fabrication. Regulated coursing is managed under the auspices of the Irish Coursing Club which is a central authority for more than 80 local uh, coursing clubs throughout the country. In my own county of, of County Clare, there are six coursing meetings held uh, in clubs in Liscanor, Ennis Clare Castle, Milton Melba, Kilrush Kilimer, South Clare, Incura Clare and Tradaree. These County Clare clubs, together with the other 74 nationwide coursing clubs, hold meetings on an annual basis, uh, typically over a two-day period. Coursing is supervised by the National Parks and Wildlife Service and monitored by the Department of Agriculture and is regulated under the Animal Welfare Act uh, 2013, the Open Seasons Order 2015, the Wildlife Act 1976, the 26 conditions attached to the licence issued annually by the Department of Arts, Heritage and the Gaeltacht and rules of the Irish uh, Coursing Club as well. Here is a cot in, in the wild several weeks ahead of uh, coursing events. During this time, the, the hares live in purpose-built hare parks where they are fed and cared for. Uh, contrary to what anti-coursing groups claim, hares that are pregnant, hares that are nursing their young, or are sick or injured, are absolute, absolutely not used uh, for coursing. And this is made explicit in the, in the licence uh, in, in the conditions that set out by the department. Muzzles were introduced into coursing uh, events in 1993. 
regulated coursing events consist of two muzzled uh, greyhounds released simultaneously uh, to chase the hare for about 20 seconds until the hare reaches uh, a deliberately uh, designed escape hatch. Uh, killing or mauling uh, of the hare is not the purpose of regulated coursing. Hair coursing has changed positively uh, over uh, the, the, the last number of years. Uh, one very good measure of the change is the actual number of hairs returned to the wild after coursing events. For the 2015-2016 coursing season, reports demonstrate that 99.33% of hairs were returned to the wild after coursing. That number stood at 85% in 1992. Uh, prior to muzzling, which represented significant improvement. This fact is backed up by the 2007 Hair Population Survey commissioned by the then uh, Department of Environment, Heritage and Local Government uh, to Quirkus, uh, an independent environmental research unit based at the University Hospital or University uh, in, in Belfast. The survey calculated that the total hair population in the Republic of Ireland to be 565,000. The 5,348 hares netted in the 2015-16 season represents less than 1% of this total. I have an interest in greyhounds uh, racing myself and coursing. My father continues to be involved in greyhounds, having taken an interest in them uh, from a young age, while there is a strong tradition of greyhounds uh, in, in my late mother's uh, family as well. One of my earliest memories uh, is of when I was young, I was travelling to Milltown Malba in, in the back of a car with two fawn greyhounds and we're going to uh, a, a trial uh, in Milltown Malba. Um, County Clare uh, and Clare Castle, my own village, has a deep association with greyhound racing both on the track and in the field. Uh, the late Paddy Darcy of Ennis bred Bypass Byway, uh, the winner of the 2002 Irish Greyhound Derby and his, his yard is just a stone's throw away from my house. Uh, Jerry uh, the Stud Maloney, we call him, uh, he's from Ballock Boy in Ennis. He, he trained, uh, or he, uh, he bred the, the winner of the 2013 English Greyhound Derby, uh, Sid Daz Jack is what's his name. While the Maloney family of um, Lisanne in Clarecastle, they also owned and trained the great Danner's Best, who won the, the Course and Derby in 2003. The year previous to that, Marty's gang won the course in Derby for Clarecastle's ATM syndicate, uh, with the dog being bred and reared by the Gallery family uh, in Ennis. Coursing people go through their lives hoping uh, to have a runner at the national meeting in Clonmel. For some, this dream comes true, but unfortunately, some people never get the opportunity to see their dogs going to slips in Parson Park. Last year's coursing season was a very exciting one for me. Uh, I attended a lot of meetings and had some success uh, as part of the Daishi Banner uh, Syndicate. Uh, we won the Dungarvan Beach Trial Stake and qualified for the national meeting uh, in Clonmel with a dark brindle bitch called uh, Clodagh River. She was bred and reared by a great friend of mine called uh, Shane O'Gorman, and Shane is from Port Law in County Waterford. Uh, he's also part of the syndicate, uh, as is uh, Senator Polly Coffey, my dad, Donald Carey, and my good friend from Newmarket and Fergus, Jody Halpin. Ultimately, Claude River was, uh, was beaten in the third round uh, of the Oaks uh, by the winner, uh, Grace and Glamour. She was a very good winner. Um, we have subsequently bred Claude River um, to last year's uh, Derby winner, uh, Kulavani Bingo, and she's just had 10 pups. They're eight weeks old. Uh, we have five dogs and five bitches, and they're a wonderfully healthy, strong litter. And uh, please God to be making Parson Park in January 2018. The national meeting is attended by uh, more than 30,000 people, 10,000 people a day over three days. It's a wonderful showcase for coursing and offers enthusiasts uh, a chance to meet up and catch up uh, every year. The national meeting gives a huge economic lift to Clamell and its environs. And I, I just make the point like the survival of coursing is absolutely dependent on the well-being of the hair population. Without the efforts of coursing clubs throughout the country, the, the hair population would be without the significant layer of protection it presently enjoys from the hair husbandry initiatives afforded by coursing clubs on a 12-month basis. Quirkus, who carried out research for Queen's University Belfast, concluded that Irish hares are 18 times more abundant in areas managed by the Irish Coursing Club than at similar sites in the wider countryside. 
A point that is never raised by the anti-lobby is the whole area of unregulated illegal hunting. This activity involves packs of unmuzzled dogs chasing any wildlife, sometimes uh, livestock, for unlimited hours with the aim of killing it. Numerous Irish and EU wildlife laws are broken, including the killing of protected species like the Irish hare. Illegal unregulated hunting is destructive to land, it's destructive to crops, it's destructive to, to livestock. In a well-published uh, case in April of, of last year, for example, four individuals were arrested in County Tipperary for poaching wildlife, uh, while, which involved particularly brutal practices. I'm also aware of uh, a similar type case reported upon in West Wicklow. In general, these brutal, cruel activities take place on private lands without the permission of landowners, with total disregard for the law, habitats are destroyed, gates left open, and no thought for, for the impact it has on, on species. On a, on a voluntary year-round basis, local courts and clubs protect their hair preserves against legal hunting in conjunction with landowners by carrying out surveillance uh, of lands and reporting such illegal activities to the relevant authorities such as the local wildlife ranger and Ungarda Siakana. If this legislation before us this evening were to become law, illegal hunting would thrive unchecked. This has been the case in Britain since Corson was banned there and is the case in, other, in, in our own country where there, where there isn't, uh, say, a Corson club uh, in existence. Uh, I'm opposing this bill and look forward to voting against it next week. Uh, Deputy Carey. Uh, now, Deputy Paul Murphy is our next speaker. Thanks very much, Ciarán Corla. Um, if I, I might be sharing with Deputy Breed Smith half and half if uh, she's here. Well, not half an hour, ten minutes. Ha half and half of ten half minutes. Half and half, okay. Which amounts to five minutes of five minutes. Thanks, Ciarán Corla. Um, first of all, I just want to say I'm, I'm pretty shocked, to be honest, by the response of the government and the speech we've just heard, which wasn't kind of, you know, the kind of balanced speeches that we normally hear from the government when they're defending things that are a bit indefensible, um, but they feel a bit shamefaced uh, about it. I mean, what we just got was an ad in our national parliament for hair coursing and how great it is and how everybody should be involved in it. I have to say, it's, I, I'm a bit shocked that you've gone that far in terms of defending what I believe to be an indefensible practice, uh, undeniably cruel, undeniably barbaric uh, practice, um, especially considering the fact that you know, all our near, near neighbours, uh, the North, Scotland, Wales, England, have all moved uh, to ban hair coursing, that we're one of three jurisdictions left uh, that maintain it. To, man to, to defend it and to positively advocate it in such a, a positive fashion is a bit uh, shocking, to be honest. Um, I want to really thank uh, Deputy Moran Sullivan for bringing this uh, bill forward. Um, I think it's, it's very good that we have it. It's obviously very disappointing that it looks like we're not going to be able to uh, pass it, but the Anti-Austerity Alliance is very much in support. Um, I think deputies have already outlined how this is undoubtedly a cruel activity. Um, the idea has been raised that this is part of nature. I mean, humans capturing hares holding them in activity, training them, then releasing them to be chased by dogs. I, I don't understand how that is a natural activity. Undoubtedly, hares die in nature. That's accepted. That is a part of nature. But human beings intervene for their own amusement and for their own profit. Uh, and the result is, uh, whether the minister likes it or not, that killings and maulings of hares happen. Um, and in saying that killings or maulings is not the purpose of hair coursing, there is some sort of admission that killings or maulings would be a, a bad thing. But it is undeniable that killings and maulings happen uh, as a result of, of, of hair coursing. Um, just to read extracts of a report from the Irish Council against blood sports coursing cruelty uh, catalogue. For example, in Tubber Curry last January, noted by the National Parks Ranger that 14 hares were hit, 12 injured, 6 badly, 1 dying of injuries and 3 more put down. Old Kilcullen last December 2015, 7 hares were struck, 3 dying of injuries. Uh, a 
Kerry, three hairs were struck, two being put down, Dundalk, three hairs struck, two dying of injuries, McCroom, six hairs required assistance, a euphemism for being struck and mauled, with three being put down, and the list goes on and on and on and on over pages and pages. This, is, this happens. It is an unavoidable part of how hair coursing uh, operates. Um, hairs are going to be struck uh, and hairs are going to be uh, mauled, and it is you know, an absolutely avoidable cruelty uh, to animals. It, it, there, is no, there is no nature to it. There is nothing natural uh, about it, uh, in my opinion. Um, I think you do have an example here of capitalism red in tooth and claw, where animal welfare and wild, wildlife conservation come a poor second place to profit. Uh, there is money to be made in hair coursing, including by uh, big business that likes to boil sports, sponsoring hair coursing events and earning profits from gambling. Uh, JP McManus until recently was sponsoring hair coursing events and has recently withdrawn his support um, because of the campaign work of organisations such as the Irish Council against Blood Sports who have done sterling campaign work uh, against hair coursing. Uh, hair coursing has a negative impact on this country's wildlife. The Irish hare is one of our most long-standing native mammals, having survived the Ice Age, but now there are examples of local extinctions and there's a fragmented population across the country. Uh, the Irish hare as a species is under pressure from human activity, primarily farming, and then the last thing that that species needs is being captured and chased by greyhounds in, in enclosures for the enjoyment, dubious though it may be, and profit uh, of a few. Of course, there is a relationship, uh, as referred to in the, the last speech, between hair coursing and the greyhound industry. Um, people may be aware that recently controversy has boiled up in relation to the scandalous practice of Irish greyhounds being exported to China. Um, and I think the Minister for Agriculture and his department have a duty to keep the House informed of developments in relation to that controversy. Uh, to that end, I think the Minister should confirm if an important meeting is to be held on the 4th of July, I think in London, which will involve his department, the Irish Greyhound Board, the Great Britain Greyhound Board and some animal welfare groups to discuss the issue um, and the Minister should report back to the House on the outcome of these discussions. Um, I want to thank all those people, hundreds of people, who emailed me, who emailed the other uh, Anti-Austerity Alliance and People Before Profit uh, TDs and presumably uh, many other TDs here on this matter. Um, they've given us uh, vital information, they've shown that there is you know, very vibrant campaigning on this issue uh, and it is an issue whereby the political establishment are out of touch. Um, a theme of the emails, I think correctly, and it's unfortunately underlined by the debate uh, this evening, is the dismay of people at the actions of Sinn Féin in not supporting this bill. Uh, Sinn Féin have given the impression that they're opposed to blood sports, but then don't define hair coursing as a blood sport. It, it is difficult to see what kind of definition of blood sports you can use when you know, uh, humans creating a situation where hares are chased around by greyhounds and doesn't qualify as a, uh, as a blood sport. And we don't accept Sinn Féin's argument that hair coursing must be maintained and regulated. At present, I agree, the Irish Coursing Club does regulate the practice, um, but it doesn't stop illegal coursing outside of their remit already. But even the events within the regulations of the Irish Coursing Club involve the injury and deaths of hundreds of hair, is, hares. It's absolutely uh, unavoidable. Um, I would urge them to reconsider their position. I would uh, again thank the uh, Deputy O'Sullivan for bringing this forward, congratulate all those who have campaigned on this issue uh, over years and encourage them to keep it up. Um, I think we, we won't win this on Thursday mm -hmm. by the looks of it, but I think ultimately if the campaigning pressure uh, is built, ultimately uh, we can win on, on this issue. Yes. Murphy. Uh, Deputy Mick Wallace. Thank you, John um, I There's probably, um, I've sensed a, a certain um, feeling around this issue that, uh, that city people don't really understand uh, country people uh, around coursing and how nature works and the whole lot. But I was born on a small farm in Wexford and uh, I don't think it's nice to see an animal suffer, and uh, and as uh, the previous deputy said, I mean, in the natural cycle of things, listen, animals die, and big animals kill smaller animals, but it doesn't it doesn't make an argument for human beings actually organising it, 
And there's a, I, I, there's a serious issue around... I think when human beings don't really care a lot about how other human beings suffer through actions that they did either supported or didn't do anything about, I think that's a problem. Because I think society breaks down where we don't, when we don't actually care about uh, what happens to our neighbour, whether the neighbour's living next door or whether he's living uh, in some other country. And there's a thing called empathy. And if you see an animal suffering through organised work on behalf of people, then there's, that lack of empathy is worrying. Someone said that if we stopped coursing, that it would hit the economy. Well, you know, that's actually a very interesting point because I got into an argument. I mean, I think you were from Clare. I got into an argument in a pub in Ennis one night. This fella attacked me because of our protest on Shannon, and he says that he was selling sandwiches to the American soldiers. So the argument developed, I can tell you, right? So despite the fact that 2.1 million people who weren't carrying guns had been killed by the US, British and French forces in Afghanistan and Iraq alone in 15 years, 2.1 million people. So our lack of empathy, our, our desire to sell sandwiches thinks, makes us think that you know what? Let's forget about what happens over there. Let's forget about the homes that the bombs fall on and when the people are asleep. Let's forget about the fact that most of the people killed are actually women and children and old men because the young people are, are, are probably out either working or fighting. And He's stretching it now, Deputy Wallace, to try and uh, link. I don't know what. Two, but sure. if, if I didn't stretch it, um, I'd be the only one in here that didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, but let, let, let's, go, let's go back um, just to pick up on a few other points that were made. Um, the word underground, driving the sport underground. I remember when there was cockfighting, and it was no problem to stop a cockfight uh, around my area at home, right? But it's actually. It is banned now, and I don't actually like see it anymore since they banned it. It hasn't got more popular. It's actually disappeared around where I live, anyway. And on the issue of driving things underground and making them more unregulated, right? Well, we were in here two years ago, and we argued for the legalisation of cannabis. And the argument of the opposition, of the big uh, parties was, oh, God, if... Uh, you know, we couldn't possibly do that. And we, f we argued that because you don't regulate it, because you don't legalise it, people actually buy bad cannabis, but there's no regulation of it. We were in here only last year, and we brought the argument of the sex workers in here who don't want the purchases of sex to be criminalised. They think that will actually make their lives and... Uh, opportunities of making a living, very dangerous. You, you, you pick arguments as, as, as they suit. You might say, well, we all do, I suppose, it's human nature. But I find it hard now to buy that, uh, the, un the, the underground argument that this unregulated nature of, of course might actually flourish and create even more problems. Now, to be honest with you, I, I haven't really, uh, I haven't spent my life fighting for animal rights and I haven't been involved in the issue at all, as mine or Sullivan over there would be well aware of. But I do have six cats at home, right? And you know what? Sometimes they might get chased by a dog, right? Now, if I, if I obviously caught the dog, I'd, I'd, I would like to give him a few clouts, right? But if someone came in and actually cut my cats and threw them into a cage and brought them off somewhere so they could let dogs loose after them, well, I won't tell you what I do to them. I actually feel very attached to my cats. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be alone in the house without them, despite what people might think. And uh, I really feel that I think having a relationship with animals is good for people. I think it's great for kids growing up to have a relationship with animals. 
And you know what? It builds empathy in them. And you know what? It might actually help them to not support us supplying an airport for the Americans to bomb the living daylights out of millions of people in other lands. Thank you. Deputy Wallace. Uh, now, Deputy uh, Matty McGrath. Town Cola, Wallam, Cooper, the Puckler, Oscar, and Bill Shin. Um, regulated coursing is and has been managed under the auspices of the Irish Coursing Club, ICC, established in 1916, 100 years ago this year, which is the central authority uh, for more than 80 local coursing clubs. These clubs hold coursing meetings on, w once annually, typically over a two day period. Coursing is supervised by the National Parks and Wildlife um, Service under the Department of Arts, Heritage and the Gaeltacht and monitored by the Department of Agriculture. It is regulated for under the um, Animal Health and Welfare Act 2013. The Open Season Order 2005, the Wildlife Act uh, 1976 and, and the 26 conditions attached to the license issued annually by the, the department and the, the rule of the of the IC, under the rule of the ICC, Irish Coasting Club. And I have to say, before I start, I suppose, uh, uh, as a spook of a gock the downach we make a dollar lorigan the hairs. I was coursing as young by and I learned an awful lot about nature, about um, wildlife and about uh, nature and about um, life in general. Where teams of men and us as youngsters go out uh, hunting the hares. But a lot has moved on since then and it's become a very uh, humane, as you said, um, activity now. And um, I see the, the, where the coursing, the, the, the hares now rightly so are muzzled and are under strict supervision and licences. And indeed, it was interesting to hear the Minister's contribution earlier, I wasn't here, but we're watching on the monitor, uh, where some clubs who acted out of order last year are under investigation. Some have been reprimanded, a small minority, and uh, it's very important that the full rigours of the law be brought down uh, to enforce the rules. Uh, because uh, we must look at, um, we, we were here today debating, and I spoke at Lint on this, this, the summer economic statement. And some people here, and I welcome the free debate here, and I compliment Deputy O'Sullivan for putting down the bill, and I know how passionate she feels about it, and I respect that. We're talking about jobs and supporting industry and jobs. This is an industry in rural Ireland of the people, by the people, of their own volition. They don't get any state grants. They don't get any IDA grants. But anyone who has a greyhound have to have a kennel, and they have to have a trailer, they have to have veterinarian fees, and they have to have uh, um, leads, and they have to t t take care for those animals um, uh, expertly. And I've heard Deputy Wallace there uh, talking about the cats. I don't know who minded them. He was at the soccer match, but I hope they were well looked after. And I'm not a hope. I know they were well looked after. And he'd be lonely. But, but uh, animals, I have a dog as well, a couple of sheep dogs, and they, well, I use them to, to, to uh, declare to herd sheep. And is that going to be stopped? And some of the animal rights people have said to me they wanted that stopped. They want horse racing stopped. So we've got to get balance here. And we've got to get a respect for people in communities who have a sport, have a tradition, have part of their heritage to go out and uh, carry out hunts and carry out, um, um, as I said in this case, now very much regulated um, uh, coursing activities. And there's a huge industry, and the, the coursing, annual coursing festival in Clonmel, the Vale of Honey, and I've asked Deputy Sullivan, and I've asked Deputy Daly, and I've asked uh, Deputy Wallace as well, to charge she is going to do Clonmella, uh, uh, Blaine Chacon, in February, the last day of January, and make fear for the Rov and, and, and Truro Tocta, and we'll bring them in, and there'll be no one stopping them going into the coursing meeting and see how it's ran, and under the auspices of the ICC and the department watch, and see what the activities are there, and we'll um, have, a, have, a, have a, a nice chat and a nice engagement, and see the sport and the type of people, men, women and children, young and old, very old men and very old people, but also very young people and middle aged of all ages, and they are the facts, and it's worth six million to the town of Clonmel. Six million euro, that three-day festival. We've changed, it used to be week one, and we've changed it to suit now for weekends because of people's uh, inability to get off work and everything else. So people come from all over Europe, a huge population of Northern Ireland, and are made welcome, and it's a part of our heritage. It's the biggest thing we've had in Clonmel since we had the flag going in the heron. And we do have the, the Greyhound track that night, and then we have our uh, music, song, and dance. 
and uh, Roddy Marchin, Freshen. We have and uh, treated hospitality, hospitality, and they come and stay in the same houses within a 30 mile races of Clonmel uh, for the for the last in County Waterford and East Limerick and and the whole area benefits and are made welcome. And I I wouldn't come up to the inner city uh, to, to Deputy Sullivan's uh, constituency or, or Deputy Daly's and try and close down an industry there. I think twice about it because I would I'd be interfering. And I'd say, look, I mean, I know we have our own beliefs, but come and see. Seeing is believing. And uh, some of the animal rights people have done awful things in the past in Clonmel. They went out there one time, long, long time ago, and put broken glass on the tracks. To, to, and the damage that would do to the, the little paws of the, of the greyhounds it would be horrific. They sent appalling letters to previous uh, members of, of, of this house and, and, and threatened to offer things to them. So we need balance. And indeed this evening I was going out the gate and it wasn't very pleasant either. And none of the people out there had muzzles on them either. So, I mean, let's be fair about it. They can be very, very nasty and very intimidating and very threatening. And that's not good enough that we can't win her out and go about our business without being intimidated and threatened. And I've been victim of that as well. But look, I have to represent all of the views of the people. But this is something that I do passionately believe about. And that it's an industry and we must support it. Because, it's, it's, as I said, it's going on and it's going on there for, for as I said, the ICC was set up in, in 1916. And those men at that time didn't object it because they knew it was a natural pursuit. And it's happening, animals are being killed every day of the week. And when we had, when the, grey, the, 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 the hares are not caught and put into boxes, they're caught and put into preserves, preserves that have been carefully constructed with huge voluntary labour of the voluntary clubs and left roam wild on those vast acres, maybe up to 100 or 200 acres. And a couple of years ago, the animal white people, rights people before the course, and came down and cut the wire and allowed uh, several players, allowed the hares run onto the motorway to be slaughtered by trucks and everything passing. So, look, get balance here. All the cruelty is not on one side at all. No one has a preserve on that. I'm just saying that those kind of activities take place too. But just to get back then to say, if this goes underground, we have a huge problem. I have a huge problem. I know that Deputy O'Keefe has, and East Limerick, with marauding gangs who are going out with lurchers, who are going out with greyhounds, who are ill-treated themselves with no muzzles. And they're trespassing on land, causing untold damage to animals, to farm property, and intimidating the f householders and the farmers. They're terrified, and they won't make statements to the Gardaí because they've been threatened if they do, they'll be burnt out of their, out of their houses. Imagine. That's terrorism. And it's going on. And, and they're going out and killing the dogs, not leaving one dog after the, uh, an innocent hare, leaving one, two, three, four, five, and chase them until they kill them, and then put it up, as the minister said earlier, putting it up on social, uh, on social media. It's despicable and it's barbaric. And I don't know why the animal rights people and, and others won't come and check this. Uh, actually, last year was the first time in decades the open, the open day, the Sunday open day of the open coursing wasn't held because we had no hares to hunt. In spite of the fact that all the hares had been collected from the wilds, brought in, uh, um, treated and, 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 and injected and, all the, and fed and looked after and nurtured, they were um, killed by these gangs of thugs, I call them, bullies, and with their lurchers and greyhounds. And we had an appalling case on TPFM recently where, where, where um, terriers were seized from a house and they were to be robbed, they were to be stolen, broken into and robbed, cut locks, and used it as, as, as a handle of a shovel with nails on it to hunt the dogs to take them away for that kind of business as well. And this activity, and the people are afraid of their life, and I'm a compliment, uh, 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 Superintendent, um, uh, uh, Superintendent um, Le uh, Willie Lehy and the Superintendent Pat O'Connor and others in, in, the, in the Limerick region for the clamp down on this. Because it happens not only during the day, but it happens at night time. And the people are terrified. And we have the guard these time taking up huge amounts of it, trying, to, trying to watch this under the Wildlife Act and prosecution. And they did have prosecutions. And then we have people being robbed elsewhere. And a lot of these people doing this are touting for robberies also. And it's open season. And the ordinary citizens that I represent in their own homes and own farms, fences have been broken, livestock has been damaged and harried, sheep have been attacked by the dogs, and cattle breaking away and breaking out on roads, causing more accidents. And this uh, goes on, so, and, and we're here in return to trying to deal with this the controlled uh, amount of, of, of causing an industry instead of the people by the people. They put their hands in their pockets, they pay for the greyhounds, they pay for the veterinarian bills, they look after them better than they look after some of, some of ourselves. They're so mad about the dogs. And every small farmer in my constituency in the past had greyhounds. So it was a huge industry, an adult industry. And agriculture is on its knees at the moment. And goodness knows we need these cottage industries and we need these kind of small um, uh, ancillary industries to support the, the main farming income. And it should be promoted rather than 
restricted. And I issue, again, my focal score, I can't call that, an invitation, a query. to talk to Sullivan, I was talking to Daly, I was talking to Wallace, I was to Dieter and Mella, and see, and seeing is believing. And not listen to the people who say they're not allowed in, and they're not allowed to be in cameras, and they're bullied and they're intimidated. No, they're not uh, bullied and intimidated. It's a very peaceful event, and there's never any trouble at it, and there's thousands come to Clonmel, and it's a lovely festival, and everybody enjoys it. Okay, there's gambling going on, there's gambling going on everywhere, and I never, I, I bet in my life actually, but I tend to coursing and I meet the people, I meet them every year, and, and big on a crack, I'll sport to bring more uh, big, big sh shiva over to Guntok Shees. Go to Maha Gordon Kong Kola. Tommy De Lola Ray Ganesh Nagudi and Chakta Breed Smith. August, Kong Kola. Um, I'm sorry I'm late. Um, the Honourable Joe Biden, Mick Wallace referred to, landing the planes in Shannon, delayed me. There's a big palaver around the green with dozens and dozens of um, stretch limos. I don't know where he's gone for a pint, but he's obviously gone for somewhere, somewhere local. Um, I want to support Moyne O'Sullivan's bill as a small step towards a kinder and more humane society in all aspects, and especially not just about how we treat hares, but I think this is a wider argument about our attitude to all sentient beings. So I welcome this initiative and thank you, Maureen, for bringing it to the doll. And I think that the case has been made by many different groups here on the cruelty involved in hair, co in hair coursing. It's undeniable and it's unbelievable. And to claim that the animals don't suffer and that the tradition must be respected, etc., I think is a weak argument, a very weak argument, and in most cases demonstrably false. There'd be more honesty involved in this debate if those who oppose the banning of hair coursing would simply tell us there's lots of money to be made in it, both from the events that they run and from the gambling that takes place in the industry. And therefore, it is about putting the creation of profit and commerce ahead of other considerations and ahead of the terror and the pain that's inflicted on defenseless, on defenseless animals. But beyond that, I was really struck in preparation for this debate on a number of things I hadn't realised. Most importantly, um, the wildlife expert and bird watcher and photographer Eric Dempsey, who I did a class with in um, the People's College on bird watching, points out that Irish hares are a unique race of mountain hares found nowhere else in the world, a protected species, and Heather Humphreys as Minister can issue licences to the coursing clubs who net them and hunt them, but that these hares are in a very serious decline across the country uh, due to habitat decline and other issues around the country as well as the coursing. But what's most interesting is that these animals are for us one of the longest established native mammal on the island and one of the last living links we have to the previous ice age. And I think that's quite a, an amazing thing to think about and would be a real shame uh, to lose them. And the same naturalist Eric Dempsey points out that we don't spend any real uh, effort in protecting our natural, our natural heritage as against our national heritage. So there's nearly total silence when birds like the corn bunting go extinct or the corn crake and the skylark and the yellow hammers which are now going into serious decline. So we have to think about these things because they do contribute to the sort of society that we want to live in. So we support this bill for those specific issues of hares, but because it does say something about the kind of society that we should aspire to. I wasn't born with a huge aspiration for animal rights, but I've come to believe in the concept of our duties as humans to both all living things, people, as well as the beings who, who inhabit this planet, and that we should act at all times to minimise infliction of cruelty and pain to animals that's unnecessary. And that's not just on hair coursing, but on animals which we export and the manner in which we uh, produce animals in agriculture and poultry. Um, I think, though, that the ultimate source of this cruelty and the degradation of animals is inherent in the sort of economic system that we have. And that is the one that prioritises competition and profits before people and environment. Um, it is an economic system that degrades both the importance of human needs behind that profit system and certainly does the same to animals. So for those who campaign for animal rights like Matty, etc., we stand with the people, or those who campaign for the, the, the rights of coursing, we want to say that we stand with the people for, who campaign for the rights of animals against unnecessary cruelty and suffering that's inflicted on them. But the ultimate cause, cause of that suffering 
is not Matty McGrath or the people of Tipperary, or it's not some kind of misguided element of our society. It is an economic system that prioritises profits above all other considerations and relegates the needs of humans and other species. So if we're now living in the midst of the Earth's sixth great extinction event, biodiversity is crashing across the planet. The cruelty that this bill highlights is just a small example of why coursing and generally cruelty and degradation of this economic system towards animals and towards environment is absolutely wrong and we should oppose it. And I want to endorse Maureen's bill and welcome the fact that she's brought it here this evening. Minister to respond, please. You have five minutes. Uh, just I want to say that I, I have listened to the concerns raised during uh, the course of the debate and uh, let me first of all say that I do appreciate that this is a sensitive and emotive topic for many, for many people and uh, people have sincerely <coughs> held views on the matter and uh, they are entitled to those views and uh, I, um, I accept that. Um, but coursing is not a hunt to kill sport. Uh, and as I have stated earlier, over 99% of hares involved are released back into the wild. Last year, for example, 5,348 hares were used during coursing, and of that figure, 5,312 were released. And uh, just to be, just to just to state this as a fact, hares are not kept in boxes uh, prior to meetings. They are kept in a, a fenced field where they are fed and they are watered and they have small enclosures to rest and to sleep. And also, I just want to be clear also, just to state again, that all meetings are attended by a, a veterinary surgeon and my officials attend coursing meetings as uh, resources allow to also, uh, also monitor compliance. And just in relation to Bull Island, I understand the main reason for the decline uh, in the number of hares on Bull Island has little to do with hare coursing. The fact that some dog owners allow their dogs to roam off the leash does not help in fostering the hare population on the island. And I understand the main landowner on Bull Island, which Dublin City Council, is working po uh, proactively to raise awareness and address management issues. Now, I have some, I've heard some uh, contributions which questioned my role as Minister in allowing these uh, issues to, light, to, to issue. Uh, and what some deputies fail to recognise, or they're simply not willing to recognise, is that for many people, in rural communities, this is an integral part of their heritage, and this is part of their tradition. And I want to acknowledge uh, uh, how, how Deputy uh, McGrath outlined how arts and heritage it, it comes together at coursing meetings. And in many cases, it has crossed generations from father to son and so forth, as Deputy Carey has outlined. And as Minister with responsibility for both heritage and rural affairs, it would be remiss of me if I did not try to find a balance. In this regard, I am satisfied that the strict licensing conditions and monitoring currently in place finds that balance and allows coursing in a highly regulated environment where welfare of the hare is paramount. If clubs breach the conditions, they are punished, and I have referenced, referenced such instances in my earlier remarks. An outright ban on coursing, which is effectively what this bill is proposing, could drive the sport underground, and I accept that that would be a non-intended consequence of Deputy O'Sullivan's bill. However, I am aware that this has been an issue in both the UK and Northern Ireland where bans have been introduced. If that was to happen, coursing meetings would take place in unregulated environments and with no controls in place. I, allu I alluded to the dangers of hair lurching, eh, as others did in my earlier remarks, and we, what we certainly don't want to see is a rise in this type of illegal activity. And as I have indicated, my responsibilities under the Wildlife Act relate to the conservation of hares, and I have no concerns in relation to its conservation status, which is classified as favourable. As regards welfare, and as I have pointed out, my department has over the years uh, included conditions on the licences issued to the Irish Coursing Club. I will continue to work with my colleague, the Minister for Agriculture, Food and Marine and the Irish Coursing Club to ensure that coursing is undertaken to the highest standards for the benefit of the welfare of both hares and greyhounds. This is a highly regulated industry under licence. Without licence, the industry will go back to um, 
to operating without it. And uh, the, what we have now is a controlled environment. And what I would say, don't let it go into a non-regulated space. Deputy who contributed, and while I obviously didn't agree with many of the arguments, I do respect everybody's right to express their views, as we do live in a democracy. What I am kind of heartened by is that everybody is talking about welfare of, hair, of the hares. It's just that we have different views on exactly what is the welfare of the hares. In 1993, Tony Gregory stood here and he introduced a private member's bill on wildlife to ban live hair coursing. And I stand here today and I'm doing the same. And after his death, I sat up there in the, the visitors gallery with family and friends and supporters. And I listened to quite a number of speeches about Tony, about his political career, about his integrity and his honesty, his commitment and his passion for justice. And there's so many instances where he was a voice for those who were voiceless. He was passionate about nature, a fervent animal lover, and he abhorred cruelty to animals. And in his bill, he spoke about, quote, the welfare of the vulnerable and defenceless in nature's creation. And I think it would be a very fitting and a lasting tribute to him if we were able to complete what he started in 1993. We know the hare is a timid and a delicate creature, um, and it's cruel to treat the hare in the way that he is treated, um, an animal who's used to the freedom of nature, with the snatching and the netting and the very stressful transporting procedures. And then into the so-called training of the hares for the better sport, where they're familiarised in the fields, so that when the coursing begins, that they will run up the centre of the field. And I have absolutely no doubt that blooding of the greyhound is alive and well in in rural Ireland because otherwise why would a greyhound run after a hare? And even though it's muzzled, the greyhounds can maul the hare, strike them, inflict agonising injuries, bones broken, bodies crushed, tossed into the air like ragdolls. So the muzzling does not prevent injuries and year after year of the muzzling, we do have the statistics on this, and I've mentioned already about the stress myopathy. And I recently met a former ranger from the Parks and Wildlife Service who was quite unequivocal in describing this as cruelty to animals. Now, some of the arguments that came up. The coursing is part of our traditions. It's neither traditional nor is it Irish. Coursing, as practised by the Irish Coursing Club, was introduced to Ireland by British Army officers at the Curra in 1813. The other argument, if live hair coursing was banned, it would be driven underground and we'd have illegal hair coursing. But what that's saying really is that those who are into coursing are very the sort of people who are prepared to break the law. Um, because I'm against live hair coursing, I'm also asked, am I against horse racing? Well, I think there's a big difference. Our, ho our racing horses are not in a race where they are being chased, mauled, tossed, terrorised by another animal ten times their size. There's just no comparison. I'm also told, because I'm a dub, what do I know about rural Ireland? Yes, I am a dub, but I'm also Irish and I love my country, both urban and rural. And with a name like O'Sullivan, I can assure you of my rural connections. In my case, it's counties Kerry and Meath. And I've also got a very, very long association with one of our islands, Ilon Clara in West Cork. Another argument is that this is an urban-rural divide. Absolutely not, because there are extensive objections in rural Ireland to this practice. And very regrettably and very sadly, we have many examples of animal cruelty in our urban centres and in Dublin. I just find the whole practice deplorable and archaic. And to repeat what Deputy Smith said, because I've been reading it as well, about the, the Irish hare being special and a subspecies of the mountain hare, possibly our longest established native mammal, even here during the Ice Age, and at the rate we are going, it's not going to survive well into this century, and it will go the way of the corn craig and the curlew. There's considerable doubts about the report that you mentioned, Minister. It's been sharply criticised in other quarters that its conclusions are not trustworthy. The Irish Wildlife Trust did a species action plan for hare, and what they said was the populations have undergone a substantial decline in the past 15 to 25 years. And then there's also the aspect when hares are taken from coursing, it leaves the young hares, the leverets uh, left to starve. 
You know, we look at the Animal Welfare Bill, and I quote from it, a person shall not do or fail to do anything or cause to permit anything to be done to an animal that causes injury, including disfigurement or unnecessary suffering to or endanger the health or welfare of an animal. So are we saying that this is necessary suffering? At 20% of coursing meetings, as in the official reports, hares are injured, hares are put down, and greyhounds are injured. That is not necessary suffering. And I think it's against the whole tenor and trust and ethos of the Act. I think it's a national embarrassment that we persist in this cruel practice. I understand the numbers are falling at coursing meetings and no reputable company or organisation will sponsor a coursing meeting. Now, I have been critical of the Minister of the Arts on the licence issue and allowing the hair trade, but I do acknowledge the significant and laudable role in the numerous commemorative events to celebrate the 1916 Rising. So I'd like to draw your attention to a letter that was written by Margaret Pierce, brought to my attention, sister of Podrick and Willie, in which she condemns hair coursing and says that both of her brothers, quote, will be foremost in condemning cursing, cursing for the sadistic spectacle that it is. She says they would have been totally opposed to the inhuman treatment meted to innocent little hares at cursing. And we're very conscious that we want to have fitting tributes to the memories of those who died in 1916. I'm also struck by the number of um, clergymen, um, who male, who attend um, were frequent attenders at cursing meetings. And I just wonder how they reconcile that with one of the church's most loved saints, St. Francis of Assisi, who is the patron saint of ecologists, a title which honours his boundless love for animals and nature. Now, I don't want it to become a sexist issue, but my understanding is, is that the attendance at coursing meetings is predominantly men. And very regrettably, the majority of women elected to this House are going to vote to continue this cruel practice. And maybe the women in the political parties who share our views and do not like this wanton cruelty to defenceless animals will stand up to their male counterparts. And I also know, because they've told me, that there are men in the various political parties who are against the practice of live hair coursing and they would like to see it banned, but they're going to be subject to the whip. I've asked for a free vote on this matter part of our new politics and I continue to live in hope that this time next week I might get that free vote because I stress there is an alternative. I think it's in May that they start the rag coursing in Australia. Not a single hare will be snatched from its natural home in the countryside to serve as bait. Not one hare will have to endure the terror of the chase in a wire enclosed field or endure being mauled, struck or pinned to the ground as happens here. But the fun can continue with the rag coursing. Um, if you Google hair coursing, everything that comes up is negative. And if you Google images of hair coursing, you will see scenes of terrible cruelty. And that is the reality. I mean, uh, I can't believe that the Minister can talk about concerns for the welfare of the hair. And we have these statistics and we have these evidence and the figures um, of the exact opposite, where there is wanton cruelty. Um, you know the line from Gandhi? First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Well, animal welfare people have been ignored. We have been laughed at, we have been fought with, but we will win. We might not win next Thursday, but we will win at some future date. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sullivan, uh, I, must now, I must now put the question that the bill be read a second time. Is that agreed? Yeah. It's agreed. Yeah. Oh, it's, not, it's not agreed. Okay. The Chakti Atar Hevna Ta. I choose the ta in a Kenya, Abradish Neil, Neil Stoilum Gulbuitse Erin Kest. Vote the, vi the division is postponed until the weekly division time on Thursday next, in accordance with Standing Order 72. Ta on Dal Nish Er Atlo, Gadi Lahur Tresh De Majalamarak. Good evening, Magav.